Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Gibson. I am the Assistant Medical Director here at Acute Center for Eating Disorders at Denver Health. COVID served as a catalyst in terms of setting up telehealth to be used in this sort of a setting. I think the issue that comes into play is that we really don't know um, the benefits of telehealth as it applies to this population outside of some studies looking at the use of telehealth with family uh, treatment sort of benefits. There's really nothing out there looking at how telehealth is going to be um, the outcomes of telehealth as it relates to people with eating disorders. I think you really lose that human touch, that uh, ability to use nonverbal communication with telehealth. You're also losing the ability to get body weight, vital signs, some of those other physical exam uh, components that can really help you help to decide and determine how well somebody is or is not doing with their eating disorder. So I think you just need to ask much more direct questions regarding their medical complications. Are they having symptoms that suggest maybe they're having some cardiac arrhythmias? Are they passing out more frequently, having palpitations? Um, are they having symptoms of hypoglycemia, shakiness, nausea, diaphoretic? Are they um, having mental status changes? Asking them questions about increased falls? Are they having difficulty doing some sort of activity that they could recently do? And obviously you need to continue to ask those safety questions. Um, that can be very vital in this population. And if you have concerns, fears, I think you need to be really willing to get that patient in to see, uh, you know, to get labs and get uh, a much closer look at that patient that they may need at that point in time. The vitals and lab work that you know I'd be really concerned about in this population, significantly low bradycardia, heart rates in the 30s, 40s, electrolyte issues, low potassium specifically that you can see in purgers um, that puts them at risk for heart uh, arrhythmias. Uh, sodium can sometimes be abnormal depending on fluid intake. And again, that low blood sugar that can be very deadly in this population as well. Acute continues to provide the same face-to-face, room-based, uh, center of excellent level of care that we've been providing for 15 plus years. The team that are taking care of these patients are dedicated solely to patients with eating disorders. We're not in the main hospital at all. Hospital at all. We're in a separate building from the main hospital, which in theory should also protect our patients from uh, you know, that risk for COVID. Patients that are needing to get here, we can try to arrange air ambulance, which also further reduces that risk for COVID. And we have a lot of safeguards in place. We're working on getting all of our patients COVID testing as well. So a lot of things that are hopefully going to make that risk for COVID uh, minimal compared to what you may face if you were to admit to a regular hospital.